Hello, BookTube. I have a couple of quick updates for you on matters of vital interest to this channel and to the future of our world. Uh, yesterday, for instance, in quick update number one, I uh, threw you all into a great deal of terror and confusion by confronting you with my stern reprimand face. I sternly reprimanded the, a great number of you for responding to my call to send me pictures of your Shakespeare and your dogs by sending me pictures of your Shakespeare and your cat. Uh, and a number of you were terror-struck and abased yourself, as you rightly should, and I wanted to show you the results of some of those. One particular person, one particular offending party, decided that the best way to grovel an apology was with a picture not only of dogs, but of just the right kind of dogs. This apology was clearly aimed not only at me, but at Frida Bean. Those are well-behaved, well-groomed miniature schnauzers. <laughs> not, I'm not at all similar to the animal that I have here. You can barely tell they're the same species, but nevertheless. <laughs> uh, it's true that some dog pictures this time around were a little bit more questionable than others. This, this particular sender showed me his collected Shakespeare and uh, what he refers to as his dog. Uh, <laughs> not 100% sure of the breed involved here. I certainly like the Shakespeare collection of that. And I must say, that is a very kissable little face. <laughs> but um, even so. Uh, and then this particular sender uh, sent me a picture and knew from watching my videos to know that, that they needed to circle the Shakespeare, because otherwise I was going to pay attention only to the beauty at the bottom of the screen. The Padme hairdo is what this was referred to, because the ears are back. The, the Padme hairdo on this stuff. Uh, there were some backsliders. We'll get to them in due time. This was one of them, for instance. Notice how cooperative the creature is in trying to have its picture taken. Yeah, that's great. Also, lovely edition of Shakespeare, though. Uh, but look at this, though. Look at little Petey. He's only barely bigger than the annotated Shakespeare. Oh, the poor little thing. He's a tiny little thing. He's smaller than Frida. And then we have Enzo. Look at mighty Enzo. And very nice. There, we see an, an e-reader, first of all, with Richard II on it. But right next to that, we see Jack the Bodiless by Julian May. Very good to see Jack the Bodiless on the shelf. Although, I confess... It took me a long time to concentrate on the shelf instead of that incredibly kissable face. I don't have a short-haired dog anymore. <laughs> Kissing for me involves whiskers now. <laughs> uh, and then uh, the last one that I wanted to show you, this is Sophie. She's unfortunately not with us anymore, but look how loved she was. Look at how beautiful that face is. Oh, <laughs> oh my. <laughs> uh, uh, and that is... Detail number one is to let you know that the cavalcade of Shakespeare and pets continues and that, fortunately, dogs are in the ascendance now, which is where they belong. Uh, the second little note that I wanted to share with you today uh, comes from a viewer uh, who pointed out something to me that I didn't know. I hadn't realized it myself, which is that on the HBO show You, uh, the second season just concluded, and in the final moments of the final episode of the second season, we see the show's star, four foot eleven, six pack a day tobacco addict, uh, Penn Badgley, who is he, he's literally the size of a small child. If you watch the show, you will see that he's virtually never pictured where you can see his feet on the ground next to the feet of a co-star because he is he comes up to their sternum. When there are many, many, many shots of him solo thinking, walking around, sitting at a table, that sort of thing. In this particular scene, he's walking by a pool. And you can tell from the camera angle that the, the director of photography is just pulling every trick they know to make him seem normal size. But he is not. He is, he is tiny, absolutely tiny, and has been smoking six packs a day since he was eight years old. Uh, but it doesn't matter, because in the final scene of the second season of You... My reality changed <laughs> because the character in you it, it pretends to be bookish. He's he's Hollywood's idea of bookish, and he is walking across. He's walking along the side of a pool with a book in his hand, in order to sit down by the pool and read that book. And that book is Crime and Punishment, but not just any Crime and Punishment. The Cat's translation of Crime and Punishment in paperback, which has a blurb on the front, by me by name. And if you're watching that final episode of the second season and you freeze at just the right frame for just the right picosecond, you can see that my name appears 
in a, in, in a Netflix original production with a Hollywood star. And I think you would agree that that has to change things around here, so I am going to buy a pair of mirrored sunglasses. I'm going to start doing the gun hand expression. And from now on, I want you all to refer to me as Jaden. Okay? Because I have gone Hollywood. I have officially gone Hollywood. <laughs> me and Theodore. <laughs> so those are the two notes that I wanted to update you on. There'll be more to come. Uh, but I should warn you about the second note. But now that I have appeared for a picosecond in an HBO, in a, a Netflix original show, my already insufferable levels of egomania are going to increase. I know there are quite a few of you who didn't think that was humanly possible. We shall see. <laughs> Thank you, Booktube.